Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Ali Salman and also Dr. Khalid Masood onto the stage uh, for a Q&A session with our keynote speaker today. Uh, we'll have about 30 minutes for this session before we end the first day of the conference. Um, so, yeah, when in the morning, uh, Dr. Khaled Masood uh, was um, giving his uh, keynote um, address, I was thinking that we could continue um, with uh, more discussion, but I think it's it's good time even now, because a lot, uh, many, uh, you know, other presentations have been also offered, uh, which have, I guess, enriched our perspective. Um, about the issues of uh, democracy and um, in Islam uh, in the context of uh, political developments in, in different regions. So I think this may be an appropriate time to indulge further. Dr. Khalid Masood, I have requested him uh, that uh, he can, uh, for our benefit, uh, take five minutes just to sort of uh, summarize uh, his, uh, his main points. Uh, but he also promised not more than five minutes, and then it's your time, and then we will have more questions and answers. Over to you, Dr. Khan. Well, thank you very much. <coughs> uh, I was uh, I was going disappointed because I was not there was I could not raise any questions. So I'm glad that this uh, opportunity is provided. Uh, let me first uh, briefly. Uh, look at, uh, uh, mention the background with uh, which I approach this question. Uh, in political science, I'm not a political scientist, so uh, I have no problem with the deviations. Uh, in the political science, there is a problem uh, being discussed about democracy that goes back to Carl Schmitt and who differentiated between political and the legal. And uh, in, with reference to Islam, democracy is always discussed with reference to religion and politics, or rel the religious and the uh, political. So my hidden agenda was that why only these two brothers, the politican, uh, political and religious, why not legal there? And then also I found out, and it's being confirmed by other papers also, that there's another brother missing, and that is social. So I will uh, uh, say something about that also. Uh, about the background, when uh, it, the, uh, the question of uh, a necessity of state was raised during the prophet's period and pro prophets with prophet. The Quran and the prophet's instructions are not very clearly whether the state is necessary or not. This is a question that has become more important either in the Abbasid period or in the modern period. I will not go into details, I'm just giving the, uh, the bullet points. At that time, uh, the religion and uh, political, the separation between religion and uh, politics was not there. Most of the uh, states, even uh, the city-state of Mecca, the Quraysh were also the religious leaders and also the political leaders. The other Abbasid period, the Sassanid model, was also the model where religion and politics were together. Uh, empire period uh, also were the same. So in the, there's a continuity in Muslim political thought about having religion and uh, politics uh, together. But the Prophet's uh, instruction or less uh, absence of instruction that uh, state is a necessity or religious necessity, and I mentioned uh, 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 Imam Juwaini, who says that it's not a religious uh, uh, necessity and not based on any text in the Quran or Sunnah. Uh, that raises a question. Now, okay, uh, so I uh, made this uh, study by asking first to look at this doctrine, Twin Brothers. What does it mean? Why, what was the historical context? 
and second i look at it that uh, whether there is a separation between religion and politics in this theory and also in the general muslim political theory and the test question for me was uh, uh, whether there is an attempt to define boundaries to define what is religion and what is non religion and what is religious and what is the religious other so about the uh, twin brothers uh, the emphasis was on the uh, biological because twin is biological fact and also interdependence they are separate but independent uh, interdependent uh, and they are <coughs> although they are they have two different lives but in political theory the question is whether the one person who is a religious ruler uh, religious uh, representative and the ruler whether he should have both uh, the powers or both authorities in the abbasid period this was questioned in a different way because earlier it was a very pragmatic uh, attitude uh, the the caliphs were uh, selected elected appointed different ways so there was no one way but in the during the middle abbasid period the military uh, generals took over and the sultan also was added with the caliph khula khalifa and then the separation between uh, khalifa and the uh, and the sultan became the one became religious that is caliph and the sultan became political so all these are contexts so in twin brothers the history is that it was uh, introduced uh, with reference to sasanid uh, uh, model and uh, uh, imam ghazali uh, cited a hadith which others considered that is a fabricated uh, uh, hadith one of the fabricated hadith but that became both a a doctrine and a hadith which were, which uh, it was discussed and i have uh, gone into details about that uh, uh, analysis uh, so then i took religion or the religious uh, as a separate item and the political as a uh, political uh, different item about religion i took two points bid'ah and tashabbuh bil kufar bid'ah is actually a uh, distinction of religion or uh, defi definition of the boundaries of religion what is religion and what is non religion because bidah means an innovation uh, that uh, uh, becomes a heretical or becomes heresy so when does it become heresy uh, that means that the muslim jurists have to define what is religious and what is non religious because it is on the uh, only when it is added to religion or is it a religious addition uh, of innovation then it becomes a heresy so that means this is a this is one point where you can see how uh, jurists are defining religion the second was the tashabbu bil kufar that whoever imitates the infidel becomes infidel which means that uh, uh, there is a concept of religious others with which you define what is religious and what is not religious and in the imitation you can uh, demarcate what is religious imitation and what is non religious imitation so i uh, surveyed that uh, and i uh, came out that uh, there was always a clear attempt to delimit the boundaries of religion in both cases about the political i uh, took uh, uh, examined two doctrines one of siyasa and the other was secularism uh, secularism of course they in uh, discuss in modern times and siyasa from the very beginning uh, but uh, i briefly said that uh, the doctrine of siyasa underwent shift changes in uh, five at least five different uh, uh, crises of the uh, political empire or the political uh, state in islamic political history secularism in the in the modern period and secularism uh, the five different muslim uh, 
country areas or Muslim population areas had different experiences politically, culturally, and also in the uh, in the uh, theoretical level. Uh, so my understanding of this uh, was uh, based on Niazi Berkus' uh, idea that uh, there are different perspectives, epistemological practice, uh, uh, perspective, sociological perspective, and also the uh, the theological perspective. So these countries have different uh, uh, approaches to the definition of secularism, and secularism does not mean all the time separation between religion and, and uh, politics. Uh, so uh, there, are, there may be combination of religion and politics under secularism, and then as uh, Professor Atas has explained, the secularism is a philosophy, but uh, secular and uh, uh, democracy in, the, in, the, in reference to uh, democracy, when we talk, talk about secular and non-secular, uh, it is a, a, a political uh, definition of uh, uh, sovereignty uh, in the meaning of uh, uh, what is uh, uh, religious authority and what is non-religious authority. And it's also differentiated with secular secularity. So all these differences show that in the modern period, why secularism becomes a part of the discussion of democracy and why uh, it makes Muslims, some of the Muslims reluctant, is because the secularism has been defined and as an ideology to replace, which replaces religion. Which also means that secularism, only secularism is not being taken as an ideology, but the religion is also being made a political ideology. Ideology means uh, that it's a power-based uh, conception or worldview. Uh, in this uh, uh, paper, what I want to uh, mention, uh, Imam al Harman Jawani's reference, that in this uh, whole discussion, in the modern and in the uh, early period, the people are missing, the masses are missing, the society is missing. Uh, these are the people who are directly or indirect, indirectly uh, serving the political, serving the religious or selecting the religious and they have a part in democracy but also in other uh, forms of government and in religion also the ijma, the consensus. But the Fuqaha or the Muslim ulama have always uh, de-emphasized the role of religion, uh, role of the ulama, uh, of, uh, awam or the public. In ijma also, this is a consensus of the ulama, consensus of the scholars. Although the question is raised by the society, by common man, the, the person who has to bear uh, the interpretation or live according to the interpretation of the of law by given by the ulama or fuqaha is the common man, but common man has no say, common man has nothing to, uh, to contribute. Uh, I think the uh, Imam al Haramain's uh, discussion also uh, supported by the practice of the uh, discursive nature of the Islamic tradition that throughout the Islamic history and in the modern period also, the participation of the, uh, uh, of the masses or the society is always there, either through question istifta or by the uh, acceptance or non-acceptance of uh, certain fatwa. So all these things make important that we do pay, we should pay attention uh, to society or the lost brother, the social. So I think that uh, uh, the question of uh, democracy uh, should be shifted, not between the religion and politics, meaning religion being represented by the ulama and politics be uh, being represented by the feudals or elites or the politicians, but in both cases, the role of the society and role of this social uh, should be also studied and also uh, counted. So that's a brief. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe we can have uh, some questions from the floor uh, about some of these uh, 
Assalamualaikum. I'm Sharul from Basri. Uh, my humble question to the professor uh, on the, his opinion on the possibility of having a triplet rather than a twin. The the, the other triplet is uh, al hukuk al insan, human rights. For which I see that the Muslim world is taking a back seat on it, either democracy or human rights. For uh, it is somehow noted that uh, both these uh, other two uh, members of the triplet are uh, vehicles for the Western uh, powers to impose external ideologies into the Muslim countries and seem to be at most times selective and unfair. Uh, whilst in the Islamic countries now, uh, repressed groups are crying out for enforcement of, of these values. Uh, uh, if the professor can comment also, is it a matter of contenting values, serious values? Uh, for instance, in the uh, Declaration of Human Rights, uh, issues of God has not been addressed. Uh, so these are the things that 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 that, that, that um, I think uh, one needs to consider. For me, it is closely correlated. Uh, second thing is that uh, you mentioned just now about the uh, somewhat up upliftment of the people, the laymen. I think we had this conversation before lunch, and I was talking about uh, pressuring the people to pressure the politicians. What is your recommendation for Islam? for the people to make a change in the society. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please. Uh, uh, anyone who wants to can kind line up so that we know how many questions are there and we can plan. Uh, I would just like to have some queries to, to, to enlighten myself uh, because I'm not very clear. If you can uh, go to questions, because okay, I'm going like, to the questions. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to the questions. Yeah. Uh, the whole confusion of this is uh, dichotomy between Islam, democracy. I think arising due to the last 200 years, Europe became dominant powers, and then it tried to because it became very successful in terms of material power and all that dominated the entire Muslim world. So the idea developed from this European experience that is a secularism and democracy which evolved there in their context of time that might be needed because church was very dominating and very suffocating experience for them. Church became so dominating. So that separation of church and state took place and precisely the problem arises because the same idea is being implanted in the Muslim world. So despite going to this original context, Prophet Muhammad times and Hazrat Umar times, where we see a lot of elements of democracy are there, best periods. So we are trying to search somewhere. That is a problem. I think would you like to please comment? Uh, because uh, that is what I believe, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mama Shahadat Hussain from Bangladesh. Uh, come to the present uh, situation. Uh, we see the present politicians in many different uh, countries. Uh, their position is when uh, they are not ready to accept the orthodox Islamic scholars' view on democracy. Even they are persecuting to those people who are raising this type of voice in many uh, jurisdictions. So in that case, my question is, uh, how can we influence them? Very simply. Thank you very much. Uh, please. Th thank you for your remarks. Uh, I want to ask, are they still brothers, state and religion? Okay. Can you repeat, okay. please? Because I can't okay. hear. Okay. Are they still brothers? Uh -huh. You say twin brothers. 
I think there's a problem with this, uh, with this definition. Uh, as much as uh, I remember, Hegel says that the state is the match of God in the world. Do you mean that? State is the? And the state is the match of God in the world. Okay. Uh, do you mean that? Uh, and if there is no state, can we say that we cannot have a religion? Thank you. Assalamualaikum. I am Munif from University of Uttara, Malaysia, Kedah. I have one question. It is about the very basic thing in your presentation. What is the meaning of religion? Is that something related to theology or relate to Islamic law? What does it mean? Because I realized one of the presenters uh, in this afternoon mentioned about uh, religion is a part of culture. It differs to what Professor al said, that culture is a part of religion. So your comment, please. Thank you. Okay, I think we can yeah. take, uh, please, uh, over to you. Yeah, okay. Uh, very helpful questions. Uh, about the human rights, uh, I think that uh, what happens uh, uh, with the Islamic law, especially in the modern times, uh, we uh, have forgotten that uh, there was also, with Islamic law, with Sharia, there were also akhlaq, moral values. But there was so much emphasis on legal aspect or the, the uh, educative and the legislative aspects that uh, uh, morality uh, was uh, forgotten even in the early period. In the modern period, the legal philosophy which was positivist also uh, uh, excluded morality, especially social morality. Uh, morality in Islamic legal thought and Islamic philosophy was something which was universal, which was not limited to one religion or one uh, only to Muslims or other, but this was ever, ever, uh, always discussed by philosophers, by, uh, by people of uh, writing on ethics, and also people uh, writing in uh, on Islamic uh, uh, law, that these were the values which were universally accepted. Why? Because uh, the legal reasoning was limited to the method of qiyas, and the logical reasoning, that you have to take one verse or one statement from the hadith and then deduce the rules or laws from there. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion on that in Shatbi and also in Juani and others that the Quran, firstly, is a book where there are verses which were revealed in Mecca and there are verses which were revealed in Medina. In Medina, they are mostly with uh, the day-to-day -day legal matters, but in Mecca, they were universal values. So all these, peace, uh, harmony, uh, and all that were, were there already in Mecca. So Imam Shatbi says that whenever you are uh, making a fatwa, you must relate your uh, Madani verses to the Meccan verses, which means that the legal uh, concepts, legal uh, values must be related to the uh, Meccan verses which relate to the, uh, to the uh, moral values. Shatabi also came up with the with alternate uh, methodology alternate to the deduction or alt alternate to the deductive uh, analogical reasoning. He uh, recommended that uh, when you are looking at the Quran, you look at all the relevant verses to that problem and come up with a inductive reasoning, inductive analysis. 
and he came out that if you look at the Quranic and the Hadith, uh, uh, all the uh, commandments and all the rulings, you will find that they are basically asking for protection of five basic values, and these are the rights and right of man's to uh, right of human uh, to safety of life to uh, family to uh, to property uh, to religion and to his uh, human uh, faculty this, these are five I, I i have counted only four so this this is based on a different methodology but the idea because uh, the idea that there are some values that the law should basically uh, defend or protect or should take care of, he says that these are the values that are honored in all societies. So the idea of uh, that universal value should be the basic uh, uh, objective of any philosophy of law or objective of law is already there. He's, he belongs to the 14th century, but you can find in the earlier 9th and 10th century also. Now, why it becomes Western is a politics. You mentioned that uh, because Western powers uh, came in 19th and 20th century and uh, they were, uh, the Muslims were deprived from their political power. Earlier also it happened in Spain, uh, in 14th century, I mean, 15th century was the end, but uh, already Muslims were under non-Muslim rule in various parts of Spain, and gradually they had to leave Spain. And in 13th century, when the Mongols destroyed Baghdad, then also there were areas that Mongols took, took over and Muslims were living under non-Muslim rule. So all these debates are there in the Islamic legal books. Uh, so it's not only in the 19th century. But what happened, I, I, I'm elaborating it because it's, a, it's a very important. Why it happened in the Western? Because in the 18th century, the Muslim world was going through a reform, uh, reform efforts uh, by looking at themselves, I mean self-critical uh, methods. When uh, uh, these colonial powers came, then that effort was left out and only emphasis was restoration of their power, restoration of their political power. So all these knowledge seeking and uh, uh, self-criticism was forgotten. And we came, uh, if I can not use a better word, we uh, fallen into blame game. It's not the right attitude. We should also be looking at when Western powers defeated, what was the Muslim condition? Already two centuries before, we were declining already. Uh, secondly, that uh, Muslims have been very pragmatic throughout their political history, in political theory, in political formation. Uh, there was this debate that only there is one Islamic political system, there is only one Islamic political theory, and there is one on uh, Islamic political model. This is a modern phenomenon, and we should uh, uh, reconsider it, because in the modern phenomenon, it was, a it, it was a invented during the period of nationalization, national, national uh, nation states, and at that time we were redefining ourselves in uh, political terms. So all these ideas that uh, the colonials have defeated us and the colonial have destroyed our identity and uh, all these things, and uh, to counter them, we should have a, our own state, our own political system left us concentrate more on uh, the political aspect and we forgot the other aspects and uh, basically the self-critical aspect. So I wanted to emphasize this because it has, every debate goes back to the 19th and 20th century. Uh, the other question was uh, about the uh, reform and the layman. Uh, I think I will put it this way that uh, we are talking about law or political theory or political system. The 
majority must be must uh, uh, accept their that reform must accept that idea and must be socially constructed to accept that idea otherwise it will be imposition when we say that uh, layman does not uh, know anything layman uh, should be only uh, laws should be must be imposed reform must be imposed so we forget the uh, the acceptability idea uh, uh, until we have we include the layman uh, in this process they will they will there will not be an ownership of the common man and that uh, i think is a problem how the reform i think all these reforms should be in a language in a uh, in a manner that uh, common man understands and uh, we we must uh, uh, build a trust with the common man so that we can have reforms i think reforms by legislation reforms by law uh, do not uh, succeed uh, as we have seen already uh, I have already uh, talked about this uh, Islam versus democracy question coming in the West, in the in the modern period. Uh, it's a it's a power politics, yes, uh, and it's a, uh, it's a, it has to do with the uh, uh, with the uh, with the power games and all that. I mean, uh, it's true, but I think we should forget. Uh, we should not forget that. First of all, uh, there is a continuous uh, thinking in, in Muslim uh, political thought that state is not a religious necessity. Islam can survive without a state. And secondly, that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, never gave any idea, never gave any uh, detailed uh, uh, formula how to establish an Islamic state after him. So that means that emphasis was on something else. So that means that left the Ummah, left the Muslim community uh, open to pragmatism trial and error, find more and more uh, new ways and whatever is better for the society, better for the Muslim community and better for the people. So that was the practice uh, until the modern time when we started to define Islam in uh, political terms uh, and uh, also in other areas. Uh, politicians are not ready to consult orthodoxy. Uh, that's another aspect uh, in the religious that uh, when Islamic law, uh, because uh, in, in Islam, uh, religious uh, uh, discipline was expressed in forms of law. So the fuqaha became, the jurist became the representative of, the, of uh, Islam. Uh, as a result, there was a very, from the very beginning, there is a tussle, uh, and very clear uh, since the Umayyad period, between the religious group and the caliphs. Uh, as I mentioned two examples also, that uh, the religious groups uh, wanted to keep uh, Islamic law, legislation, fatwa to, to themselves so that the uh, political or the caliph does not interfere into Sharia. It became, remains independent. But because of that, they developed the authority of the ulama and they became the only expert community and also uh, they also gave the idea that the people, the common man, does not have the capacity, cannot have the authority to uh, reason, to interpret law. So because of that, there is, a, uh, there is an emphasis on the authority of the ulama as far as religious matters are concerned which in some way is different from the church, but also is a religious authority uh, which is uh, uh, continuing uh, as, a, uh, as Imam al-Harman uh, Juwani says, that they are claiming the authority which only the Prophet had. And th that this differentiation between the authority of the prophet and authority of the jurist or authority of the ulama is some, uh, 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 most of the time is blurred. So I think if we take care of that, then the ulama as, a, as experts, as, a, as a, uh, 
they learn it can guide us but the authority should not be only to them but it should be consultative it should be uh, depending on the uh, participation in the discussion of the common man and also the acceptability yes uh, three brothers is a uh, i mean is not a uh, I mean, I was joking that there is a missing brother, uh, but uh, I think that uh, uh, the question remains that how to define religion and how to define the state authority or how to differentiate between the political, the religious, the cultural and the social. I think there is enough in the, already in the uh, Islamic uh, fiqh literature, Islamic legal literature uh, about the boundaries that they make of, uh, about religion uh, and also about the, uh, the uh, political. Uh, we can learn from their methodology and uh, look at the how we can do in the modern period. What's important is that uh, a religion is something which is immutable. So immutable, we do not have the authority after the Prophet to claim or expand on the immutable. So immutable should be uh, limited to the uh, teachings of the Quran and Sunnah and uh, <coughs> that's why the concept of Bida and the concept of Tashabu and there are also other theories where they, they make a difference. And the difference is that, <coughs> for instance, in Tashabu case, that something which is a symbol of religion in a culture, in a different culture, uh, imitating that thing would be like uh, accepting their religion. But if that is not a religious symbol or it is not considered a religion, then it is uh, not uh, a tashabbu or not imitating the infidel. Similarly, a bidha will be something which we introduce as a religious obligation or into the religious obligations or we say that uh, it is another religious uh, duty that we are introducing, then we are uh, making a bidha and these definitions are already discussed uh, in, the, uh, in the literature. Religion and culture. I think in the modern period, because of uh, questions of secularism and other uh, aspects, uh, we have started uh, looking at uh, religion as culture. But I think there, there is a, in Islamic tradition, there is a difference, there is a difference that culture, uh, the, the things that are part of the culture, uh, and considered as a, as a religion, uh, the reformist has always emphasized that there should be a distinction. Uh, the cultural obligation, the cultural uh, aspects should be uh, kept seek, uh, separate from the religion. Uh, religion is, a, is part of culture in the sense of the worldview and the worldview, thinking, thought, thought category, and that uh, uh, I'm still uh, on writing on it, and I think I can uh, not, I'm not yet uh, have clear, I'm not clear enough today. But I think culture is a social construct. Religion is not social construct according to the teachings that we have in Islam. Religion is something that is uh, given through the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and culture is something, uh, and the understanding of religion is again a social uh, construct. And uh, I, I should also emphasize here that in, uh, in Islam and also in others, uh, us, the religious values are uh, are turned into reality through social construction, through social practice. And that is why sometimes it becomes difficult to differentiate between what is religious and what is culture. But I think if we understand that uh, religion is not a social process, but the culture is social process. And when we, uh, when we want to make uh, a religion socially acceptable, we have to uh, make it a part of a culture and a social construction, and that's where the ambiguity comes in. I hope uh, these things are clear, but uh, I think the 
these are the questions that will always be uh, open to discussion and open to different interpretations. So I, I guess that we can uh, call it a day. Um, thank you so much, uh, Professor Dr. Khalid Masood, for taking some time to answer this question. Uh, Professor Masood is um, um, hopefully will finish uh, very soon uh, his intellectual project, uh, the book, uh, which is called uh, The Social Construction of Sharia. Um, and I hope that you can uh, finish it soon and maybe sometime again can share, um, inshallah, the book and its outcomes uh, with this audience. Um, with this, um, I thank all of you and uh, hand over back to Ira.